This video is brought to you by my awesome sponsors. Make sure to check out the affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for all the support. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to Need for Speed Unbound one year anniversary. Yes, it has been eh, about one year since Need for Speed Unbound has been released. And I do a little bit of a discussion video talking about things that I've enjoyed about Need for Speed Unbound, things that I've rather disliked, and more or less discussing how the game has progressed over the one year that it's been out, uh, out into the world. So first and foremost, starting out with the story mode. That is the thing that you start out with before you can even really... I mean, you can kind of get into the online, but just not really before experiencing the story a little bit. So I originally, when I played it, enjoyed how you develop a relationship with, you know, some of these characters. And the main plot point of, you know, Tess, not Tess. I can't even remember. Of that other main character stealing all the cars and running away. I thought it was interesting until I learned that that was a note for note plot point ripoff of Need for Speed Most Wanted. I'd completely forgotten about that. So it's kind of like, well, the one interesting plot point was just a ripoff of something that's already happened in the franchise. Okay, great. Fine. Uh, as far as like the characters go, everybody knows that Tess is poorly written and to the voice actors that I in, interacted with pretty early on when I did the the people of Need for Speed Unbound video. I love the voice actors' death. Don't get me wrong. Uh, some of the characters are just not that greatly written. I love Rydell. I relate to him quite well, actually, or quite a lot. Uh, but the, Tess's character is just unfortunately annoying. As furthermore in the story the the idea of like the weak structure again pretty interesting on the surface it gets very grindy and very repetitive very quickly which I found very unfortunate because I would have loved to play through the entire story and I'm trying to right now just so I can get the meep meep he set Rocky Horn which is hysterical <laughs> beep 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 uh, but it's just it, it's such a drag and on top of that the fact that each event creates a little bit of a heat level and the cops are swarming you where you're not really ever driving you're just driving to avoid cops and you're just constantly watching the map when you're in the story mode when you have any flavor of heat it's just it kind of sucks. It really does. However, the thing that I've really enjoyed about Unbound is the class system. Now, coming from Need for Speed Heat, you had like a cap of performance points for a certain event, and you could be any level car underneath it. Which a lot of times with my wife, I would have her play as the top level 350, whatever it was. And I would purposely choose a car that was like 275 just because it gave me a little bit more of a challenge and it gave her a little bit of an edge. However, it's just doing that the entire time got a little bit stale. So the fact that we have this whole class system now where it's you have to create a car within B or A or A plus or S or S plus. And on top of that, there are even like drift events or rumbles or gauntlets, or you have to build different unique cars for those sets of events. Your garage has like, instead of heat where, yes, I did have like eight cars. I only used like two of them. Unbound, you have to have a fairly large, uh, a fairly large garage. Now the story mode, they force you into it saying you have to have S and S plus and you have to do all that to get to the grand, but for at least online mode, I love that aspect. I really do. So 
kudos to Criterion. I love the class system for the cars. Pretty nice. Upgrades and customization, fairly identical to what you would expect from Need for Speed game. I mean, the additional customization options like a bumper removal, kind of nice to have. Uh, didn't really have many options or opportunities to be able to do that with a lot of cars, but fine. So then we get into online, where, to be honest, I was a little bit skeptical of online coming into this, like, into this game. Because the main headline was, next generation only consoles, you can only have four players in a party, and there's only 16 people in a lobby. And I'm sitting there going, that is a massive decrease from Need for Speed Heat's 32 player count lobbies and eight player parties. I was very skeptical because I got enough people to buy heat where we would have six to eight people sometimes. We'd fill out the party. So I'm going, okay, so if we get all these people into Unbound, that's going to be a problem. So I don't know if they were expecting a lower player count because of their decision to go next generation only, but then that was even amplified worse due to the fact that nobody could get the next generation consoles because of the supply shortages because of the pandemic. Eventually, because now enough people have the consoles and now enough people have the 30 series and the 40 series graphics cards, it actually kind of works having 16 people in the lobby and four people in a party. I've, When I've done online with my wife and her friends, we've only had four people at a time. So that's really just kind of worked out in our favor, which has been nice. So yeah, it's just... I think the idea of going next generation only to really focus on the graphics was a... It took a while to get there, but it was a good move. Now, the other interesting thing is how this game has developed over the, the year. Originally, online was so stinking dead. And the also the thing of not having like the day-night cycle I thought was a little bit odd. Turns out you can just, in the settings, change your preferred time of day. So if you just want it to always be night, you can do that. Or if you want it always to be, like, rainy, you can do that. Again, that's nice. But they should have been more forthright and said, Hey, because there isn't a day-night cycle, keep in mind, this is an option to counteract that. Would have been neat. Originally, when online came, it was incredibly dead. Like, there was nothing to do, and it was just not great. However, their development of what it's gone to become now... Originally, again, thinking the lobbies of only 16 people, I thought was going to be a problem. Turns out, I think it was, like, the perfect amount of people when it came to just all of this. Because the link-ups was an amazing... An amazing, amazing addition. Because originally, it's just like the online seemed really dead. But now, it's there's something to do. There's something to interact with the world and the people and the environment. is awesome. So yeah, some of these challenges here where it's like, get all four wheels off the ground or do drifts or go to these specific marked zones or take out these certain cops or, you know, smash these objects. It is so... I, I imagine that this has essentially been done before with other games. For instance, like... I don't know, Fortnite. Or taking this kind of idea where there's like a localized event in a certain area is very MMO-y. So taking inspirations from there, I enjoy that the inspiration that they've taken. Because, yeah, it adds a new life to this whole environment. Something that 
with 16 people I didn't think was really going to be there, but there, there's, there's a lot of fun in here now. So I know it took them until, what, volume three? And when they first announced Link Up, I'm like, why, why would anybody do this? Honestly, why would anybody? And then you start doing them. It's like, okay, this is why. <laughs> so online link ups, awesome. So one of the other things I was going to make mention is the graphics. Everybody's talked about how much they've hated the graphics or loved the graphics. It's such a controversial topic. And my two cents are: it's fun watching the Need for Speed community kind of become self-aware on the subreddit. Because they've said, hey, you know, older games, you give enough time, everybody's going to be like, oh my god, this game was so underrated, it was such a gem, and it's the nostalgia filter coming back on. And in this instance, I imagine that, you know, it's hated at the moment, but given enough time, I think everybody will appreciate this game a little bit more. And I think why is because the Criterion took a risk. This is the only game, racing game, in the last five, ten years that looks different from the other racing games. You've got, like, these anime graffiti cartoony effects on top of this, like, photorealism. And when it was first announced, people are like, I don't know what to make of that. I enjoy it because it gives the game character. And if you look at any other racing game, it's photorealistic and it's all the rest of that. But it's just, it's bland, it's washed out. And if you look at like the most recent Forza Motorsport, it looks super uninteresting. I just, I don't know what it is about it. It's just, it looks so bland and I hate it. So this has got color, it's got effects. It's got so much. So yeah, uh, Criterion took a huge gamble and was incredibly divisive on release. But I think the people who are still playing this enjoy it for what it is. It's different. And I think at the end of the day, the other thing how I feel about this game is Need for Speed Heat and this game will hold a special place in my heart. Need for Speed Heat mainly because it was the first Need for Speed since 2012's Most Wanted that I had actually really played. I tried to get into Rivals and Rivals never worked. 2015, I had controller problems. I didn't pick up Payback until way later afterwards. So he was like the first Need for Speed that I'm like, hey, this looks interesting. And I got friends to play it. And that's why it holds that place in my heart. It's because I look back at the memories of playing with friends. I've normally played Need for Speed games on my own solo. And that's ultimately why Unbound will hold a place in my heart, too. Because I was also able to get my wife and some of her friends into it. And it's fairly similar, if I'm honest, to Heat. Gameplay mechanics and everything. Yes, the graphics are slightly different. Yes, the class system is different. Yes, the link-ups and the online are different. But it will hold a special place in my heart for a long time coming. So yeah, Criterion. Here's the other thing too. They continued to develop this game close to a year after release. Heat, it was dead after six months. They released it on Steam and said, there's everything. We wanted to have like an extra DLC pack that we had to cut so much content. And that was that. And we never got anything else from it. And it felt dead. This game, a year after release, still feels like it's going well. So I don't know if they're going to continue supporting this game. I hope they will. But I'd be fine if they just end with Volume 5. I really would be. 
it would maybe if I really, 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 really had my wishes come true, I'd have another type of global event like link ups that they would add. So you can have link up or this other type of event. But yeah, I am. Originally, I wasn't sure how to feel about Unbound on release, but after playing this long enough and frequently enough and with friends, it just. I like it. I like it a lot. So I hope you guys uh, share my opinions one year after release. If you guys don't, if you guys disagree with the graphics or the gameplay or absolutely anything uh please let me know in the comments down uh, below again thanks so much for watching uh like comment subscribe like i said let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below would love to hear what you guys have to think about this and yeah so again thanks so much for watching hope you guys have a great day today take care bye